Hello indie game fans, just in time for the end of the month are the hidden gems of August, where as always, we have a nice variety spread across different genres, so there's something for everyone, where there might just be a giveaway or two, so do watch this video in full. Let's begin with Recompile, a 3D metric vena entry that has some ideas but isn't without its flaws. As someone who loves this genre, I'm always happy to check out something new in the space, plus the fact that it was in 3D made it something different. While it is super stylish due to the action and aesthetic, there are perhaps some inconsistencies with the mechanics and gameplay. Each sub-area seems primarily to be focused on a new gimmick like a puzzle platformer, but there's something just a little off that makes it all not quite fit together, which is a shame since this could have been excellent but is relegated to a smaller game with interesting ideas. If you enjoy puzzle platformers, one of the must plays is 2D and Top D. One that, like many great games in the space, starts off relatively simple but quickly evolves into so much more. As can be seen in this trailer, the gimmick is that you control two characters, one in a top-down, almost Sokoban-style block-pushing puzzle game, and the other a fairly standard 2D platformer, where the trick is that they need to work together to solve the puzzle. I thought that the inclusion of gravity and that the dimension switching allowed enemies to move in the other plane as well was a very clever idea and even has boss fights of all things, making this pretty good. Oh, and as of recording, the developer just announced that they had a baby, so congratulations to them. I enjoy beat-em-ups and a great one for the month is Mayhem Brawler, one with three unique playable characters and co-op support for three players. One look at this game and I'm fairly certain that they were inspired by the excellent Streets of Rage 4, spotting a similar art style, which I do think looks fantastic. Rather than your straight up brawler where you're facing off against regular criminals, you are instead playing as super powered law enforcers, taking on werewolves, vampires and street wizards, adding an awesome fantastical twist to it. Nothing that you have not seen before, but something to pick up if you want a new beat-em-up. While the action roguelite Beat Blast does look a little minimalist, do not sleep on this title since it's one of the more innovative bullet hell entries in the space. It has you making a beat, as seen in the lower left, where your various upgrades and attacks are stacked in that grid and automatically fire off according to the beat. One thing that I love in roguelites is the way that you can stack upgrades that can synergize with each other, where this game is the perfect encapsulation of that. In a special treat, a huge shout out goes to the developer for providing these keys for giveaways, so if you want one, be sure to comment below and follow them on Twitter. Growing a mushroom in Atrio is easy. All you need is fertilizer and water, and getting fertilizer is easy. All you need to do is use your trap to launch a mini deer into the poop pen with the 10 other mini deer you've captured, launch the poo into the factory, dump the fertilizer onto your mushroom, and then let it grow. Full disclosure, I do have somewhat of a relationship with developer Isto Inc, since they are a supporter of the channel, and I have communicated with them a couple of times. But that is because, even from the outset, I thought that there was potential in Atrio the Dark Wild. From the opening seconds of this trailer, you can see that it is one of the cleverest survival factory builder games 
Since instead of simply researching technology and building your way up the production chain, certain components and automation bits actually require you to venture out into the dark and capture the wild animals and creatures. As such, it's something really unique and different in this subgenre, but in common with most other entries, it's currently in early access but does have massive potential. While at the same time finding a way to replace your dying battery. But don't worry, replacing your battery is easy. All you need to do is venture into the dark and avoid dying to the exploding boxes, the pushbacks, the giant screaming spiders, pass through the blood lake, harvest your own body, pet a deer, sacrifice yourself in exchange for a battery, get resurrected, replace your battery, refuel your ever-expanding base, and then take a well-deserved break to collect your delicious, delicious mushrooms. And like I said, growing mushrooms is easy. Cute games galore on the list of the best indie games of the month in yesterday's video, and we continue that trend with Button City, one of the most vibrant and colourful games in recent memory, where Fox and his friends need to work together to save their local arcade. Like most cozy games, it's not the most challenging of titles, but this is focused on three mini games that you can play in the arcade, a rhythm DDR-like, a racing game and a MOBA, all weave nicely together into the narrative. I just had a silly smile on my face when I came to know of Kiwi, a co-op puzzle platformer where you and a friend play as kiwi birds running a post office, simply being just the cutest. The local multiplayer space is filled with titles trying to be like Overcooked, generally 4-player top-down camera experiences, so this was a very nice entry that just focuses on two. The expected hazards and traps are present, making every level chaotic fun, so for something a little different, this comes recommended from me. We also don't get many pure turn-based roguelikes these days, so of course, Jupiter Hell gets a very special mention, coming to us from the developer of Doom RL, who basically had to rebrand due to copyright issues, but this is a fantastic entry in the genre. I was pretty excited for Mech Armada when I found out about it, since it's a roguelite tactics title that pits giant mechs against monsters, so what's not to love? Having checked it out, I still stand by that it's a good game but not exactly great, where of course, the comparison will be made to Into the Breach, which is kind of unfair since that game is a masterpiece. In comparison, this is a lot simpler, but I do like the mech building portion, so let's see how things go in early access. If you watch the opening seconds of this trailer, you will probably know on the spot whether Dread Templar is for you or not, but this is a fantastically made retro first person shooter not to be missed. Following in the footsteps of games like Dusk and Ultra Kill, but just a little bit more graphically advanced, play as the titular character delving into hell seeking revenge, having to slaughter a bunch of demons in order to do so. It is unabashed with the inspiration and speed of this game, looking like Doom, Quake, UT, and even Painkiller mashed into one, being an all-action title worth a play.
Let's kick off the top 5 with something a little different. Spookware is a spooky themed mini game collection, where if the new WarioWare game didn't quite do it for you, this instead is a great alternative. Your main characters are three skeletons known as the Skelly Bros, exploring the afterlife and living death to the fullest, adding some loose narrative threads tying the mini games together, where I do think that this is perfect for spooky season. There have been quite a number of survival city builders over the years, some good, some excellent, and some pretty bad, where Patron definitely falls in the middle category. It does have a very classic medieval setting, where you're trying to turn a village into a city, having to build the facilities and ensure that your people have the resources that they need. I loved doing things like this in the original Age of Empires, simply building an army of villagers to strip the land bare, so it's nice that we actually get some dedicated games in the space with quite an extensive tech tree to keep you playing. Interestingly, it's not an early access title and just released their first DLC, so it could have the potential to be pretty huge. If you enjoy action platformers, Song of Iron will be the title to get, combining beautiful visuals and visceral action. It's a classic tale of revenge, where you play as a powerful viking warrior, hacking and slashing your way through any and all things that stand in your way. I love how this game is presented with the cinematic camera angles, especially the background elements, while not discounting the action and animation of combat. Impressively, I believe this is from a solo developer, so indie developers take note, this is the kind of quality that I love. One more entry for Spooky Season with Lamentum, a survival horror game in the vein of Resident Evil 1, where you play as a man stuck in a creepy mansion on a quest to find a cure for his wife. Yes, it's a pixel art entry, but you'll be surprised at what this developer can do with the medium for a horror game, creating some of the most grotesque and disturbing enemies and monsters that are worth a look. It is creepy and unsettling in all the right ways, with every combat encounter being pretty tense affairs with limited resources, so essentially, everything that you will want in a horror game getting a great spot on the list. Let's round things off with something a little lighter, shall we? Dodgeball Academia is a sports RPG that takes place in an academy focused on dodgeball, where our hero must train and climb his way to the top. The art style is fun and vibrant, the action very fun with some impressive fighting game style special moves as well, all with the energy and spirit of a sports enemy. It does also come to us from developer Pocket Trap, who made the underrated beat-em-up Ninjin Clash of Carrots, 
so I'm only happy to help showcase their work, taking the number one spot. For more of the best indie games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.